Most long-term storage in a computer is done on a hard disk. Let's look at how data is organized and saved on a hard disk. When we add a new hard disk to a computer, the computer cannot immediately use that hard disk for saving data. The hard disk must be first prepared so that the operating system knows how to save and identify files on the hard disk. In the first step, you create a partition on the hard disk. A partition is simply a division of the disk, and it carves out a portion of the disk and prepares it for saving data. You could have a partition that takes the entire hard disk, or you can create multiple partitions on a single hard disk. So for instance, I could have two partitions. Any space not assigned to a partition is labeled as unallocated space. When you purchase a new hard drive, typically the entire drive is unallocated, and the first step is to define one or more partitions on the drive. Partitioning simply divides the disk into logical spaces. Before you can use a partition for saving data, you need to create what is called a volume. A volume is a single storage area within a computer. In many cases, you may have a one-to-one -one correspondence between a volume and a partition. So I would create a partition and then define a volume that covers that partition. However, I can have a volume that actually spans multiple partitions. This might be useful, for instance, if I've defined a partition to use this much of the hard drive with some unallocated space. I could conceivably add space to that volume by creating a new partition and assigning that partition to the volume. I could also take another hard drive and create a partition on that second hard drive and assign that space as well to the volume. So by having the idea of partitions and volumes as separate logical concepts, I can create a storage space that uses multiple chunks on a single drive or multiple chunks across drives. When I define my volume, one of the activities that I perform is to assign it a drive letter, and this is assigned within the operating system. So for instance, the volume is assigned the C drive, or the D label, and this helps me keep track of different volumes that have been assigned within the operating system. Another process that needs to happen is formatting. Formatting prepares the disk area with the rules and the specifications for how data is saved. Windows supports two different formats for hard disks, either the FAT32 file system or the NTFS file system. The file system identifies how files are located on the drive, as well as identifies additional features that are available for storing and managing your files. Within a volume, I can create logical objects called a directory, or sometimes called folders. And a directory is nothing more than a means of organizing the files within the disk. So for instance, when I create a directory, I can then within that create files. And the directory helps me organize my files in a logical way so that I can easily find them on the drive. It's important to note, however, that when you create a directory, you're not actually moving files from one location to another, but rather you're just creating a logical entry to which all of your files are associated. Directories take up very little space on the hard drive. In fact, they are simply a directory entry that has files associated with the directory. A file contains the actual data that is created by an application. So for instance, you might have a Word document, or you might have graphics or audio files. Files occupy space on the hard disk, and they have a start and an end point. Most file systems are able to store files as separate chunks. So you may have two or more chunks on the hard drive to make up a single file. It's the job of the file system to describe the format of how files are identified on the disk, where a file starts and where a file stops, and how these file chunks are linked or referenced together so that the entire file can be pulled together from different portions of the hard disk. Windows supports two different file systems, FAT32 and NTFS. In most cases, Microsoft recommends that you choose NTFS for the file system of your hard drives. NTFS offers advantages over the FAT32 file system. For instance, you have support for larger disk sizes, larger file sizes, disk compression, encryption, 
disk quotas and folder and file permissions. There is even some performance benefit from using NTFS over FAT32 in most cases.